All right, you guys, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. All right, SMSFX Academy, man, stand up, man. You already know what time it is, man. It's uh, SMSFX Mentor Ken. Um, you already know what time it is, man. Today, 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 though, man, we about to hit off in this Bitcoin boy Friday, Saturday, Sunday, man. We about to try to run it up on Bitcoin real fast. Um, basically, uh. Before we uh, trade Bitcoin, uh, we have to have proper risk management, man. So uh, I hope a lot of you guys probably try to take advantage of the uh, teachable course that I had going on for risk management. But man, you have to have risk management when you um, when you're dealing with Bitcoin because you can blow your whole account, guys. And I don't want to uh, have you guys dealing with indices and um, crypto right now as of now because um, we want you we want you guys to understand, you know. It's very volatile. It's a volatile market, even though you can make lots of money in those markets like that. But uh, at the same time, you can lose a lot of money in those markets like that. Uh, so by that being said, man, we want to, uh, you know, have a risk management or we want to have a plan and order in place to be able to, um, let's say, get into these markets. Right. Um, and then to be able to get into the markets and be right. Also, as well, because um, if we're wrong, man, we will lose a lot of money, guys. So with the proper knowledge and the proper risk management then, uh, and the proper uh, risk to reward ratio, um, yeah, we can make a lot of money on Bitcoin, man. So uh, with all that being said, I'm about to share the screen really, really, really fast. And then we finna go ahead over here. And uh, yeah, now we're not about to really back test, right? We finna just like see what we would do um, if we were just like, just fresh on it on, on the charts, right? We just hopping on the charts. We just hopping on Bitcoin. I haven't marked up Bitcoin or nothing yet. So that's what we're about to do, guys. Um, I don't know what better way than that. Um, seeing exactly what Bitcoin is doing. Now, as you guys can see in the monthly, uh yeah, Bitcoin ain't doing good at all. As you see this drop right here, let's see how many points bitcoin drop and we're gonna start from this very top from this wick because price was actually up there before as you see bleeding 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 and it dropped all the way to our 14 ema at some point right do you see how many pips that is guys do you see all right so so um as you guys can see you know what I'm saying? That's almost 34,000 pips, 34,900 pips to be exact, right? Um, yeah, dude, that's a lot of pips, um, which would be like almost 300,000 some uh, pips for real, right? So that's pipettes, 34,000 pipettes, but 34, right? 349,000, uh, you know, uh, pips, right? That it dropped, guys, so... Bitcoin has dropped tremendously, almost thirty some thousand, almost thirty some thousand dollars, man. It's at thirty four thousand right now, dude. Um, Bitcoin is coming from being at sixty four thousand, dropping all the way down to thirty four thousand. You know that's crazy, and uh, lower than that, actually, it dropped all the way to thirty thousand at, at one point, guys. So it dropped almost thirty four thousand dollars, literally, uh, in one big whop. As you see, this big large candle. So, anyways, man, we ain't finna get all into that, but we do want to mark this monthly uh, candle up because this was a bad month, man. May, uh, like May, destroyed Bitcoin, guys. Uh, so this is what we're gonna do, right? We're gonna mark up these levels right here, and. Uh, these key levels, and then we're gonna go scale down like we do any other pair, guys. So, uh, by Bitcoin dropping down to this thirty thousand level, I definitely want that marked up because that happened within this month, guys. It didn't happen last month or the month before that. It happened this month, guys. So, this thirty thousand level—that's one of my key areas. That's one of my key levels, guys. Um, and then uh, so that's my that's my support, right? That's gonna be my my lowest point that I'm gonna mark up. Other than that, uh. I could go all the way down here to when it was at uh when it was on these six bands, right? I could mark all that four bands when Bitcoin was four bands, but that was in uh March of 2001, guys. So that was in 2001. So I'm not going back that far, right? Uh well, actually it wasn't 2001. It was March 1st, I'm sorry, 2020. Um um Bitcoin was $4,000 at $4,000 and I could go all the way back November, you know, uh, first, right, uh, 2018, uh, it was $3,000, right, 
And then we can go all the way back into December when it was $400, right? When it was $400 in 2016, okay? So, you know, we could go all the way back there, but for what? We don't need that uh, data right now. We're going to stay in our range, what we got going on now. So our, our highest point, so our highest point was 64,000. So that is a high level for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark that up because, um, you know, hey, you know, that happened recently too. That was last month, April, right? In April, price was just at 64,000, right? So, and this goes on with why we don't put all our eggs in one basket, guys. It's okay to make the money when the moves are coming, but you have to be, uh, you have to understand and know when the moves are there, right? Um, and so I believe I can teach you guys that, man. I can let you guys know when the moves are around and when they're there, right? So then this next level, um, since we had the 64,000 and we got this 30,000, um, we got to meet somewhere in the middle, guys. So we got to get somewhere in the middle where price was, you know what I'm saying, hanging in there or trying to, you know, um, uh, reach through that point and try to get out of that point, right? So, um, so I would say, I would say this 47,000 range, uh, even though this has no order, man, I like to have stuff that makes sense, but then it all makes sense at the end of the day when you guys see what I do, how I trade, right? So I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna round it off to this 48,000 level, right? I like to I like to where it makes sense because then I know how many, uh, what like how, how the price is ranging and what, how many pips or how many numbers, you know, how many pips I can get in between these, in between this playing field. So right here, we got like 15,000 pips right here. And then from here down to here, we got about 17,000. So we off a little bit, but we got about 16, 17,000 pips there. So we got 15,000 pips here, 15, 16,000 here, and then 16, 17,000 pips here, right down this way. So now I have a middle, I have a high point, right? I have my high point, which is my resistance. I have a middle, right? Which is what you call, um, which is what you call, um, your ranging point, right? Where price can come and, and you know, it can range there, re reverse there, or keep pushing, right? Keep pushing through. Then I got my lowest point where price was just at, which was 30,000. Um, and then we're gonna respect that uh, level, right? So we got 30,000, 30, we got 48,000, and then we got 64,000. Um, me personally, since I don't like wicks and stuff like that, I just wanna round that off. I'm gonna round that off to the 6,000 level. Let's just say, hey, to me personally, it had to be a mistake. Uh, because price really truly corrected itself after it touched uh, 64K. Um, and, and like I said, man, that's just another story, right? Immediately, right after touching that 60K, what did it do? It dropped. So me personally, you know, I'm going to go ahead and mark the 60,000 area because I like to deal with key, uh, psychological areas, right, from the bank. So I know the 60,000 the whole way, right? Um, as you've seen, price went to 64,000, but it wick right down closing under the 60,000. So that's why I'm going to go, I'm going to go ahead and roll with the 60,000. All right. So now, um, so now we have the 60,000 area. So we got 30,000 as the lowest point, 60,000 as the highest point. Now we can really meet to the, mid, now we can really meet to the middle guys. Now we really can get a good, you know, a good, uh, average of where price want to go or where price is going or where price is at. So we can go and we can go and be in the middle. All right. Um, let me see. I'll say the middle is what? Let me see. 45,000. Probably not, but you know, it's math. I ain't got time. Um, 45,000. All right. So let me see. I'm going to go to 0, 0. 0, 0, 45,000 to this 45,000 level. And then now we're going to see how many pips we're working with, right? Between, so I'm in between 15,000 pips here. And then I'm in between, yes, sir, 15,000 pips here, man. So, you know, that's how we rocking, man. So we know that we got to even 15,000 pips and we know uh, Bitcoin is moving 15,000 pips, guys. Like, man, that's what's happening, right? In month, in a monthly time, man, that's what's happening, guys. Uh, that's what's happening in a monthly time frame. So we got 30,000, 45,000, and 60,000, right? But these are my key levels right here. So I, like I said, I got my resistance level, my range level, and then I got my support. Let's get it. So now we're going to drop down to this weekly time frame so we can get, so, so, so you see how these big candles is and they're huge candles, man. We want to see smaller candles so we can chop down and, 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 and uh, look at the noise and actually look at the trend, right? We need to be under, understanding that, hey, price never shoots straight up, price never shoots straight down. That's what they tell you, right? But as you see clearly, 
uh, Bitcoin was shooting straight up all bullish candles, right? But that's the monthly time frame. That's why this is a bigger time frame. And as you can see, the red shot straight down. Um, and this is the monthly time frame, it's bigger time frame. So that's why you see the bigger candle movements. Um, and then, like you see these wicks and stuff like that. That's back and forth action, guys. So as you're gonna see when we when we uh, scale in. So now we go back down, drop down to the weekly. Boom, we down to the weekly. Wow, nothing really changed. Everything looking good right here on the weekly, man. We got to 60,000. We seen price starting to make a whole bunch of wick rejections showing that, hey, price is not finna shoot up there, man. It's finna to come in a reverse and turn around. So as you see, price was at 30,000, shot all the way up to 60,000, came from 60,000, shot back down to 45,000, from 45,000 back down to 30,000, right? As you see, clear as day, right? So we can draw patterns and things like that. But we want to do it on a smaller time frame so that we can be able to see it, so we can be able to justify what's going on, right? So now we're going to drop down to the daily, right? So, boom. We're in the daily right now, and we're in the downtrend, guys, as you can see. Uh, the reason why I'm saying we're in the downtrend is because we're under our EMAs, both EMAs, right? So we're in the downtrend, man. So we're seeing price dropping and dropping and dropping. Maybe you're trying to drop all the way back down to that 30000 level. Right now, we're hanging out at this thirty five. At this thirty-five thousand level, but as you can see, um, we like to round numbers off. Um, so pretty sure price is wanting to push down to this thirty thousand, but we're not going to just make an assumption off that. We're going to see the closing of of, of 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 candles before we try to make those type of decisions. Because right now we see a nice Mariposa candle uh, dropping in the daily, and, and we see that it's dropping and it's in a red full momentum to where price is literally dropping. Right now in front of my eyes, it was just at 35,000 and dropped down to 34,900, right? So as you see, price is steady going down, steady going down, steady going down. We under our EMA, we're looking for sales, guys. Now that we determined that right here in the daily, okay, we're looking for sales, but we are the bottom, guys. Like we're at a bottom, bro. Um, as you see, price close right here. Um, price is literally scaling up on this bottom part, on this bottom half. So uh, I wouldn't be too quick to put my my uh, my uh, my buy or demand zone right there yet, just of yet, because it's just um, the daily right now. We can go down and drop down uh, even further to dig down even deeper, guys. So we want to dig down even deeper to see what's going on. But we do know that we have a full red Mirabozo candle and it's pushing price down because it's going out fast. It's at 34,930 now, guys. So as you see, it's steady going down. So we're looking at a bearish, bearish momentum, right? So now we drop down to this four hour so we can see what's going on. So now you see in this four hour, a lot of noise, right? It looks a lot more noisier, a lot more breakdown of the candle. You don't see big one big red solid candle. You don't see one big blue solid candle, man. You see the reality, right? At what price is doing. And it's moving in waves, guys. And it's moving in trends, right? It's moving down trends, side trends, up trends, all this, man. This is what I used to be scared of. And like I said, I'm going to give you guys this knowledge so that you guys won't be scared and you guys can be able to understand what's going on so that you can get an understanding before just making any type of interest, guys. That's what my point is here. So now we're in this four hour. And... And at the end of the day, we want to find price at its lowest points, right? We always want to find price at its lowest points. What price, what, what point was the lowest point? So since to give that this is a given, we're so close to this 30,000 level. Um, and now we at 34,800, guys. I mean, Bitcoin is like, I hope it's not dropping in front of me because I do want to get in. Um, if it do drop, I'm still waiting on this level right here uh, where I'm about to put my buy area at in a minute, guys. I'm just giving you guys confirmation that, and, and understanding that what I'm doing and why I'm doing it, okay? So, um, um, so yeah, I'm missing out on moves for you guys, <laughs> all right? So, um, yeah, 34,830. Now, that's dropped a whole 100 pips on me, man. I'm sick. That's a lot of money, dude. Um, yeah, already dropped to 800. Oh, 700. Now, let's go. All right, y'all. So. Anyways, man, so I'm going to find uh, our lowest points, right, where price was oversold. Here, price was oversold. And as you've seen, it was oversold. But as you've seen, it pushed right back up, literally, like, wicked so far back up because price did not really want to go down. But it had to touch a certain point, right, which was that 30000 So as soon as it touched that 30000 reverse mode. So we know that that's a buy mode. What, we, what we're trying to look for now is, um, is a zone that we can start – zoning up from okay we, we know 30,000 to 45,000 that's high up man that's already so far up that's already what 40 like 4,000 some pips up already 
from 30,000. And then we so far away from this 45,000 if we had 34,800, right? So we are a good little ways away from this 45,000. So we know, hey, what we're going to do, not take any trades because we're so far away from our, our trading, uh, our trading zones and things like that. Or our key levels? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. We're going we're gonna to get in these markets, dude. That's where we. That's where I used to make my mistakes at. I used to be like, oh, man, I'm going to wait till it gets here. And then you miss out on a million dollars because you're just waiting on, on, on certain places, which is not wrong with that. That's called being a disciplined trader, and I salute you. If you're able to do that and all the time, every time you do that, you, you're able to eat. And, and, and you know you move you move just off of that based off that congratulations right you 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 went to another level you met a new level in your trading because now you're, you're confident hey i'm only on base trades right off this even if i only get three to four trades in a whole month that's what i'm doing that's what i'm looking for i salute you because it really works right just like that the same way right but me personally i i've created um you know something that has to get me in the market at all times so i have to be able to be profitable and be able to make money um when when i when i'm when, when i'm actually looking at the market and when i want to be placing trades right so uh you know these bigger time frames is just to help me find exhaustion guys i'm not gonna lie to you the bigger time frames help me find exhaustion when i start seeing wicks crazy wicks and, and crazy areas i'm just like okay you, you must you must be tired this trend Hey, if it's down, going down, I'm looking for exhaustion on a downwards trend so that I can find me a support area to find me a buy, right? And the same thing, vice versa. If I'm if I'm looking for a sale, yo, I'm looking for a good and, and reliable resistance, right? I'm waiting on this resistance level because rather it's in the trend line, rather it's in a pattern, rather it's in a whatever, I'm looking for me a resistance level before I'm taking a sale. I'm not taking a sale at my lower, lowest point, and I'm not taking a buy at my highest, highest point. I need to take my, I need to take my sale at its highest point right which is a, a, on a resistance level and, and and it has to be making a, a a lower high guys it has to be a lower high it can't be a, a a higher low and then i'm trying to hop in for for, for sale then i'm then i'm going against my i'm going against the trend guys if i'm looking at higher highs i should be only looking for buys if i'm looking at lower lows i should only be looking for sales guys um so that's what I want you guys to really practice on and, and normalize normalize that first, right? Respectfully, normalize that first, and then we can get into all the other action, right? Um, but we got to normalize looking for higher highs and higher lows, and we got to normalize stop buying at the low, stop uh, buying at the highest point. Um, and wait to wait for some type of pullback or correction, right? We want to catch the impulse move and not the correction. All right, all right. So, um, so now, like I said, man, so I'm looking for zones to where I can you know, make scalps and trades off these zones, guys. So um, right here, um, personally, we already had a lower low, which was this right here in this week, and it waked all the way back up. So we're not looking at this low no more at this point, right? Because now price is failing to make any more lower lows, right? And they're actually making higher lows, guys. So we should be, we should be trying to look for buys or should we should be respecting these areas until they hit a certain point. Like right now, I would, you know, um, unless in the train was moving um, on Bitcoin, then, then um you know i would have got in for the sale but right now you know it's tricky right we're in the middle of nowhere and um we're not at a support or a resistance zone so therefore to me it, there's no trade now other people they might be like hey you know i might get in for the sale uh at the end of the day they might hop in for the sale but me personally i'm just looking at historical data right so I seen in this sale, right where prices was going and running, 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 and people got FOMO. Oh my God, I'm gonna miss it. Oh, oh, oh. yeah, you're gonna miss your money after you lose it um, because you're not listening, right? We don't ever sell at the lowest point unless it's a train coming. All right, if you know what a train is coming, the momentum is something you cannot. You, I mean, you you're going to understand and know that that momentum is a momentum where okay, I'm getting in, dude. I don't even care because this candle is moving, guys. So. Boom, I'm hopping on and I'm riding the train. I'm riding it with you. You feel me? I'm riding it with the banks. Obviously, it's not a, no retailer moving it. I don't care how much money they got in their in their accounts. You're not bigger than the bank or, you know what I'm saying? You're not bigger than the institutions themselves. So it's a wrap. I don't care how much money you got. All right. So um, that being said, right, I would have been looking at uh, historical data and I would have seen to my left that it was problems right there in the past. And for what do you see, guys, right now? Problems, right? And price then shot from 30 for 800, 700, all the way back up to 35,000. Now you're, you, you got in for the sale because, oh, I'm going to buy low. I mean, I'm going to sell low, which is retarded, or I'm going to sell at, at a lower low when it, after it created a lower low. Yeah, you're gonna be getting a up, guys. So this is the learning curves, man, that we that we trying to teach you guys and keep you out of. 
Um, so anyways, man, so we got this lower low right here and we got to, you know, this is a buy area because as soon as price got to this area, it turned around and it started buying back up. So it's not confirmed yet. I need two hits to be confirmed, but it's one hit, right? And if you want to count these three candles, that's one candle hit it. That's two candle rejection. Third candle was uh, engulfing. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know how you play it, but that's how I would play it right now. Um, and that is my buy zone, guys. So that is my buy zone. That was the lowest point where price was at for the four hour, okay? All right. So now we're going back up to the top, 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 because we need to find us a high point, right? So as we see on the stochastic, this higher point, on a stochastic, is actually a lower point. What? And price, you're like, what is going on here? Guys, this is crazy because this is what you call a hidden diversion, man. And so what happens is when a hidden diversion is, you're going to get exactly what it means, man. It's going to be something tricky up the sleeve, right? If you're seeing this W pattern right here printing up, you're thinking like, oh, I'm going to go for this buy on Bitcoin, okay? If you went for that buy on Bitcoin, right here was a plus doji which created a evening star right which was letting you know price was going down but it looks confusing because you see w patterns right and you hear all these gurus oh you see a w get in for the buy oh or or, or harmonic scanners right if you, you're listening to your imls and y'all listening to all these people that don't have your interest man <laughs> they need you to need them because that's the way they're going to make money i don't need you guys to need me i want you guys to be able to understand that i'm giving out knowledge in that and maybe love me for it. I don't know. But I want you guys to understand I'm giving out the knowledge where you're going to be profitable in these markets, man, where it's close to you're not going to need me. You're going to be looking at me setting up charts and telling me like, hey, did you look at this pair? And then I'm going to be like, OK, let's get it right. Because that's what we're doing. We're building a community here, which is a family here, which is an SMS, which is FX, which is a mentorship to where I'm teaching you guys how to level up man i'm not going to teach you guys anything that's going to hurt you or that is wrong or to steer you in the wrong direction i want to be able to give you guys um the same knowledge as i'm receiving it and as i'm learning every single day because trust me i don't just stop learning i always learn man i'm always trying to learn i'm always looking up different things i'm always looking up different strategies because you can have all the strategies in the world you can have eight billion strategies guys does not mean you're going to have the same win Successful win rate is someone else using that same exact strategy, guys. So that's what I'm trying to teach you guys to get the basics down pat so that you guys can be able to, um, you know, run it up, man. So and, 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 be, and be confident running it up, not, oh, man, I shouldn't have took that. Or just because you're getting a little pullback, oh, man, maybe I just, maybe. No. Hey, you saw exhaustion. That's what you saw. Put your stops on there. Let the trade run, dog. That's what you got to start getting used to, too, guys. Let the trade run. You'll do it on your demo. You'll do it on a, on a smaller account. Why wouldn't you do it on a bigger account and gain that capital, guys? These are steps and things that I'm trying to get you guys to overcome um, beforehand. Because once you make your analysis, you should have an analysis. Rather, you lose losing or win, and your win, your risk to reward should be so good to whether you lose or you win it, you're, you're okay, guys. You're going to be smiling, all smiles, all right? So now we got our bottom. Now we got our tops, right? So now we're looking up here and we see that we see this hidden diversion. I know this is a lot right now for one plate, but you guys need to still understand this type of stuff because now you see this slant up top right here. And then you see this slant going downwards on price. And then on the stochastic, you see the slant going up. All right. So that means when when it's on top. So when the, when when you see the the, the uh, diversions on top. That is what? A resistance, right? Because the top of price is resistance and the bottom of price is support. So once you see this, these type of moves and you're like, oh, man, what's going on? What should I do next? Um, price is failing to make any higher highs as well. So, boom, we can relate back to that. Oh, wait. OK, price just created another lower high. And and now I got divergence. OK. And not only do I got this resistance level, this divergence level. I have a doji that's telling me it's an evening doji. Now, now we know that sometimes dojis can be continuation patterns. We know all this. But what we do when we check our confluences and we check, you know, our strategies, we know, okay, even if we got the best strategy in the world, we still know about divergence. We know about higher highs. We know about lower lows. We know about finding trends. We know so much other stuff besides just your strategy, okay? So use every thing you have god because guess what you're going you're going to sit here and, and, and not analyze something and say oh well somebody told me that if this happens then i should just do it and then you're not confident and you sit up there and you put your money in there i just don't understand this part you put your money in you know the risk that it was going to take because 
if you didn't know the risk that you was going to take, why in the hell would you put your live money in someone? Because just as easy as, or just as hard as you work for that money is as easy as they'll take it, guys. So when you when we enter into these markets, we're not entering into these markets based off our thoughts, how we feel. We're 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 doing this off technical analysis, bro. We we're moving just like the damn market we're supposed to be because if the market is showing signs or the candles is telling a story, why aren't we listening, right? Before we putting our hard earned money into these markets, man. It has to make sense to me before I do anything. I don't care. Even when I had when I joined uh, Signal Groups, everything, dude. I'm looking at trades and I'm just like. Wait a minute. This just don't look like it makes sense. Matter of fact, hey, let me hedge this. Let me go the opposite direction. And then I'm sitting up here winning more money than I was winning with their trades, guys. So what I'm trying to tell you is, is that, you know, signal groups, it's fun, it's cool, and it's nice for when, when you are winning. But what happens when that change or nobody's perfect? Nobody win every single trade. So think about the losses. Think about everything that you're trying to risk and take when you're dealing with somebody else's analysis and what somebody else is doing that works for them, guys. When Forex is what works for you. It's just like it all start making sense after you start thinking before you start doing things, man. Um, you're doing your research. You're doing your own research. You're getting everything that you need to get together before you're actually putting your money into something, okay? All right. So anyways, man, we've seen this hidden diversions. Um, and we talk about hidden diversions on here a lot. So you know, even if you don't know what it is, we're going to continue to keep talking about it. You can continue to replay this video over and over and over and over again. But this is what's happening, right? We got hidden diversions and we got price shooting down. It happens all the time. I can go through here and show you a million times back tested, but this is live. You see it live happening, guys. Um, so that's what it is, right? So we see this hidden diversions and we see this hidden diversions. It's on the top. So we're knowing that it's a resistance hidden reversion hidden diversion amount. So we're looking for price to start going down. And we're looking for uh, the candles to tell us a story that it's going to go down. We're not just going to say, oh, it hit this level. So this is where I don't want you to get me wrong at. I'm not going to say just because you saw a diversion that is going to oh, play out as always like how it's supposed to, right? No, we have to look for certain signals, which is the candles, which is our indicators, which is you know anything that we're using to give us indication on where the trade is going guys so we got to use our brains our thinking cap and that's where a lot of people get fall off at because they don't want to use their own brain they don't want to use their own god given talents um to understand that nobody is god they don't got no special uh juice nobody got space jam juice to say oh they trade is just trade they killing it no squad in the world if the squad is overhyping and saying that they killing it every time and they always killing it I'm telling y'all, man, I'm telling y'all, bro, it's probably a, 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 some type of MLM or some type of something that's to it, to where they're trying to get you to sign up for some or a subscription, or they probably got some type of indicator that they're going to sell to you for, you know, $50 a month, right? We don't want to do none of that, man. We want to know the basics. So therefore, you know the basics. Anything else is just a plus, bro. Um, So back to everything else, right? So we got this uh, highest point right here. We see price breaking, not breaking, can't get past this point up here um, because at our highest point, um, uh, you know, price actually turned around and we seen this diversion. Uh, we seen this diversions happening. Now, these these um, zones up here that I'm sitting up here and things like that, they're not major zones, guys. So they're not bank key levels or anything like that. They do not have to, as soon as it gets to this level, sell off. As soon as it gets to this level, buy off, right? They're only spring doors, right? They're only like the, you know, what is it called? The, the, the spring door, the, the, the door before the big door, right? It's not a big wall. It's not a big floor. It's not a big ceiling. It's not nothing to really protect you. It's just a screen door, right? We can blow through screen doors, right? Just boom, blow through the screen door, all right? So it's just a screen door, guys, for right Right now right just for you to um understand that hey okay last time you know 30 minutes ago two hours ago when price got to this point it sold off when price got to this point it bought right it's just it's not it, it's not a guarantee but we look for the candles to tell us the story around that area guys i hope that's sinking in man i hope that's like the butter and butter of this conversation today i hope i hope i can even name it that you know what i'm saying like bro we're looking for the story being told around this area, okay? So if, 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 if I feel this is a sale area, what story am I trying to get this thing to tell me? Or what story am I looking for, to, for this thing to tell me? I need to be alert now. Now I need to look at everything. Divergence. I need to be looking at my uh, moving averages to see what, what am I looking for as a whole. Um, first of all, we under our 200 uh, EMA. No matter what, we should be looking for sales only. No matter what, guys. Um, um, 
double bottoms, double tops, head and shoulders. So um, along with this divergence, I was going to get into it, guys. I was just, man, you know, um, it, it, it kills me sometimes, man, when I be looking at, you know, back testing and looking at old things because it kills me, man. It kills me because I be sitting up missing out on trades because I'm not paying attention or I'm on something else or I'm doing something else, God. All right. So right here you see a shoulder and then, and you can't and you're gonna see it as soon as I show you and you can't make this up. All right. I can't make it up. They go to head. All right. And this and then they go to shoulders. This right here on the four hour, dude. Right here on the four hour, man. You got a, a left, a left shoulder, you got a head. Fat ass right shoulder, and you're at a, a, a cell zone, and you have a evening star, a doji popping up, and you, the next candle is damn near a mariposa with no top on it at all, almost like a hachinaki candle, letting you know. And <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Y'all got hammers coming, popping up all under the 14 EMA, under the 14 EMA and under the 200 EMA. Why would you try to get in for a buy right there? Oh, because they, oh, they said, oh, if it failed to make a lower low right away, then get in for a buy. Stop being crazy, people. Stop being crazy, dog. Look at what the story is telling you. And if you need a, a guidance on candles, man, then we're going to get you a guidance on candles. I'm going to do a dog ass video on candles for you guys man, so that you guys can understand candles. And why would you be looking for candles? We don't look for candles just any time out the day, any time, whenever we want to just look for candles to get in for confirmation. We have confirmations, man. We have them. We got them. We got them. Right. So this is the four hour. Right. So we see the head and shoulders pattern. We see price pushing down. We see we under the 14. We see under the 200. We see we under the 4500 level and we see we still above our buy level. Right. We haven't hit that yet. So now we can just go ahead and we've seen every pattern that we've seen. We've seen everything. We got our sales on buy zones for the four hour. Now we're going to drop down to the 15, man. And this is what I've learned to better my trading out and to make me be able to be able to be a day trader, like in and out. Boom, boom, boom. Get my plays and I'm done. Right. I dropped down to the 15. Now we can go look at the hour, which I would never tell you to skip over because you might like to trade off the hour. You might like to trade off the daily. You might like to trade off the four hour. I don't know. It's what works for you. All right. So I'm going to go to the hour, but I don't trade off the hour. So same thing though. You see the head and shoulders pattern. We already have our bias though in our mind that we're looking for sales, right? We already got that now. Now we just scaling down and trying to find a proper entry. Um, right now, the entry is, is no is no entry, guys. So I could try to enter in for the sale, but then I'm going to look at all this pullback, look at all this and all that and all this and all that, right? I don't want none of that. I don't want no pullback. I already seen price created this lower low. I already seen price create nothing but uh, lower highs. So I'm looking for only sales, so solely sales, guys. But I'm not finna sell at a lower low, guys. I'm not. So, so price is making the lower low. It haven't even finished making the lower low yet. But why would I get in right now? I don't know what price might do. My price might just snatch up and reverse back up, right? Fail to make another higher high. And then, right, once it make a lower high, then I can get in for my entry. Why wouldn't I wait for that? Why would I want to risk? Why would I want to risk jumping in at a lower low when price could just retrace back to make a, a, a lower high real fast and then continue to the downside. Why would I get in at the lowest point when I can get in at the highest point, right? Basically getting price at a higher point and selling it off, right? And selling it off and making my money, right? Same thing, vice versa. If I'm buying, right? Why would I buy price at the highest point when I can get it for a little cheaper and then I can sell it for the high, all right? Makes sense, don't it? All right. So now this is the one hour, but I don't trade off the one hour. So I scale in. I already got a bias now. I done already walked down through my bias. I told you what I'm looking for. Sales only. Right. So now when you drop down to this 15, when you drop down to this 15 minute, you see all this exhaustion right here. You see all this exhaustion. You see exhaustion. And as, as you see this exhaustion, what do you see? Here come a blue candle forming up, right? So price is starting to come up and go up at this area. It's already was going down, but it's flatlining right now. Now, we're not saying, oh, my God, yeah, price is going to go for buys now. Let me get in. But to me, personally, this is the correction part of, 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 of the downtrend, guys. So right now, price is getting corrected. Now, me as a scalper and being experienced, yes, I probably could get in for this buy, right? Once price formed the candle or whatever this candle is, this is a, a engulfing pattern, right? If this is a, a 
harami or whatever if i see a nice pattern then hey and i and i feel that this is a supported area then yes i probably will get in for the buy and i will take it to the last high guys i wouldn't try to ride the, the all the way up the reversal all the way back past the 14 past the 200 and try to be like oh yeah price gonna go up like ooh, like no that's why you be sick you be getting in for those buys and then all of a sudden you feel like hey, it's gonna get to this point and it fails to get to that point right so it fails to create the higher high right which is a higher low right and you still stay in the trade i don't understand it i never gonna i'm never gonna understand it but i do understand it in my old past because i felt like oh back back in the day i would have got in and i would have been trying to hold it because oh my god i need to get rich in one day i need a lambo i need to go do this just like everybody else doing and then all of a sudden i'd be in that trade it'd be going good it'd be going my way and then all of a sudden it'll die out and then reverse and go back the other way because i'm just thinking oh it's about to be a reversal it's gonna make a new higher high and then price is going to turn around and just go back up at what level guys if it's not a key level or a, or, or a strong, strong, strong level, then it's probably not about the reverse. It's probably just about the, it had problems there in the past. And what it's going to do is going to pull back, correct itself because a lot of sellers got in, right? It was oversold and then Bitcoin finna go back up, right? So what you got to understand is you got to understand the levels, man. You have to mark them out. So we already got our buy level, right? And that was in the four hour. We need something right now for right now though. We need a lower level for um, Bitcoin in the 15 minute if we trade not the 15 minute. So then therefore here go my, my buy box right here. So we at a low point right here on the uh, stochastic. We see that we had a low point on the stochastic. Um, and then, and then uh, if we actually go back and we see um, where price is right now, you've seen price have problems right here at this level. And that's, I can't make none of this up. Crazy, right? You see how price, literally, right? We looked at historical data. And as soon as we look over to the left, we see price having the same trouble that it had right there before, right? And what do you see Bitcoin doing? It's steadily going up. Now we went from 34, what was that, what, 34? uh 30 we was at 34 700 to 35 100 i don't know about y'all but that's a lot of pill that's 200 pill. point one bro you'll be up five six dollars right now just off the little but but looking at areas and understanding areas and understanding structure of the market is what gonna get you them trades like that bro to where you know you can enter them and if you would have entered in for that sale because it was going down it made a lower low what are you doing now you're in the hole right now you're in negatives right now right you're in negatives right it's the truth you're in negatives right now because you couldn't wait you was not being a patient trader and you didn't know what you were doing because whoever told you to buy at the low or buy at the dip or buy they lied to you guys now mind you this is a dip if i buy and this is a downtrend i don't have no say so to where it's, it's telling me that a million buyers is going to come in and push the market up because i know i can't push it up by myself right it doesn't make sense guys stop listening to everybody that be talking crazy, man, because it don't make sense. All right, so now we got a range. We got our ranging point right now. So basically we're in this 15 minute time frame, we need to find our ranging point. So we need to find the highest, right? The highest point where price went at this point, right? So we got this highest point where price went, it's right here. So now we got our sales on. Right? And right next to it, as you see, price was having problems right there. And over here, if you go all the way back in historical data, you see that it was holding that support. Right now it's holding that resistance, but uh, if we go back uh, May 27th at 3.30, we see that it was uh, support. And if we go back again at on, on the 25th of May, it was support. On the 25th of May at, 5th, at, at 12 o'clock, it was support. Uh, uh, at 10 o'clock, at 10 p.m., it was uh, resistance and support. All right? So this level is clear to me that, hey, it's a sale level, guys. And what did price do when it got to it? looking at data right now and in the past. It either was supported and pushed back up or like right now in the last few days, it was resistance, man. Every time price got to this point, it sold off, man. So what are you guys even, where you, like, what are you making up in your head? There's nothing else to talk about, bro. You see all these wicks right here. You see that this area is a trouble area. It's not a main area because obviously it's price still blew through it, got through it, and still went down in that downtrend. So now we understand that we got these ranging areas. So now we turn this red so we can have we can make sure we know that it's our sale, our sale uh, zone. Boom. Boom. Now we know that's our sale zone, guys. Now, I might just do a quick one-on-one -on -one training with you guys. 
that that's going to show you how you can be able to make money and be profitable off these ranging areas, man. Because that's what a lot of people ask me: like, how can you make money if price is not at your uh, demand area, or is it just not at your supply area, or how do you know when to get in if price is uh, consolidating at a uh, and it's consolidating on 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 a uh, EMA or whatever, right? These are the questions I get, right? And I don't even know how to make it more clear, or how do I make it more understandable than this, right? And this is the last thing, this last subject I'm gonna touch okay all right so now we're in the 15 minute now i'm about to just zoom out real fast so you guys can see uh i'm about to zoom out real fast so you guys can see uh so you guys can see um you know my bigger my bigger uh my bigger sales zones and my bigger uh my bigger uh buy zones right so you see the four hour ones right you see this you still see the head and shoulders pattern and then now we see in this area right here where price is ranging we see that uh, we have another buy and a sell area, right? So this is how you make money in these smaller, smaller little frames so that you can be able to, um, you know, be a profitable trader. Now, we don't get in every single trade. We just want to be able to understand and identify, you know, exhaustion of a trend and identifying the trend. Uh, um, and then I'll teach you how to basically like hold trades for longer and things like that as far as, far as like trailing your stops and stuff like that. Um, um, all that will come in, in, in separate videos. But right now, I just really want to touch down on where you should be buying at and where you should be selling at and where you should be entering at and where you should be exiting at, right? All right. So let's get into that, man. Um, so now, uh, we had this confirmed uh, smaller 15-minute time frame uh, sale area, right? And we looking up here and we seeing in the past that it already had problems. It was a resistance area. It was a good resistance area and it held. Obviously, um, we see at this level, right? Major wicks, right? So we see major wicks. We see price literally buys up to this level in a downtrend, which was a nice Mirabozo candle for a buy, right? It was a nice engulfing for a buy right at this, um, right at this uh, lowest area, right? So which was another buy zone right here, which was another demand area where, and the demand areas where a lot of buyers step into the market and a supply area where a lot of sellers step in. You get a lot of sellers momentum, right? Or a nice push off of a lot of buyers stepping in or a lot of sellers stepping in. All right. So now, like I said, we are at our highest point, which is a confirmed high because you see how many touches, one touch, two touch, three touch, four touch, five touch, six touch, seven touch, seven candles went, came to this position, touched there and reversed, guys. It pushed down. And you see all those weak rejections showing you that the that the uptrend is a weak trend. First of all, you're 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 not looking for buys anyways in this situation because you're under the 200 EMA. Even if it did go over the um the 14, you should know. Hey, I'm about to take a long position, but it's not going to be too far. It's not going to be uh I'm not going to take it all the way to the next level. Oh, price going to go to the next level now? No, because we know levels. We know that price moves in levels. We know that we need to um if we're taking a trade, we we're trying to take the trade from one point. To the next level guys that's what we're trading by that's how we trade so we see multiple week rejections we see price not trying to not trying to uh you know pass that pass that level what else do we see here we see an evening star we see gravestones at a what at a resistance level guys why would you be looking for a buy why Right. We know structure the market. We know price don't want to break structure. We know price not just going to just straight break structure. Right. It's going to have to give you reasoning that price is going to break structure. Right. So price will have to break through this this level right here. Right. Price will have to break through um, this level, which in the past it was problems at, which is a resistance level. We have to break through this resistance level. Right. Once it break through this resistance level, it should have to retrace back to this resistance level just to confirm that that level is support, guys. Right. Price got to find support before it buys off. Price got to find resistance before it sells off. It's always like that. Price does not move straight up and down. guys. So we know that it has to find levels to where it can gain liquidity or gain whatever it needs to make that impulsive move. Man. All right. So now we at this resistance level and we see all these patterns to tell me. I mean, it's telling me so many stories that I don't even know. Like, oh, my goodness. It's not even telling me one story that it want to go up. All these weak rejections is just telling me that price does not want to go up. Now, if it was a major weak rejection to the upside and it was like uh, um, a lot of momentum and then maybe like the news was on or I know something crazy was going on um, or NFP or something like that, then maybe, OK, boom. All right. Dang. It might shoot all the way up. Right. But it still had to get past this 200 EMA for me to even still consider it as an uptrend. All right. So um, 
boom, right? We got that. And then right here, we got perfect. Uh, we got perfect. I mean, when I say perfect, and you see how it's hitting off, all these rejects is hitting off in the past. But literally, when you see this double top right here, and I mean, it's perfect. Even the, even the, the, uh, the top half of it had no shadow at all, no wick, no nothing. Showing you like, hey, look, man, price closed right here, open below here. Price closed below here, price open below here, and price is going to continue to go below here, all right? That's what that's telling me, man. So when I got this little pullback right here back to that zone, letting me, second com confirmation, fell in to make a higher high, which created a lower high. Second confirmation, if I did not want to enter in at that double top, right? So I didn't want to enter in at the double top. Boom, this next this next confirmation I get is price failed to make a, a, a higher low, right? I mean, a higher high, right? So price failed to make a higher high, which created a higher low, right? That's my second confirmation to entry, right? Say I didn't want to get in right there, right? I'm like, oh, man, I'm stubborn. I don't know. I'm scared. I, you know, it's my last $50, all right? Right? No, look, as soon as price crossed under this 14 EMA, and we way under the 200, when it, and we got this nice gap, Bro, I'm getting in. I don't care. At that point, I don't know what else to tell you. On some real shit, like, bro, it came all the way down past the 14 EMA. You should be entering in for a sale, guys. You should be trying to look for sales, man, right? And confirmation to where you can hold this trade is that, okay, price came back, and then what did it do? It retraced a little bit to this 14 EMA, and then what did it do? Continue to push down to the downside, right? Um, And more than likely, I would have been trying to take my uh, profits at this last low right here. Um, at this last low right here, that's where I would have been trying to take my profits at. So now you see price push down, price come back up, retrace the uh, 14 EMA again, because that's what price like to do. It likes to come back to the EMA. Once it crosses it, it loves to come back to it. So it comes back to it again. And you see it come back to it again, right? And this at the, and this time, it scared you a little bit because what did price do? Price turned around, made a higher high. It made a little higher high, right? This blue is higher than this little high, right? So then there you go, right? Thinking, oh, man, price about to reverse. It's about to turn around. And for what? What gave you that indication? It's not at no major level. It's not even at your buy zone level that it that, that it's supposed to go to. Why would I do that, right? At this point, I could have took price all the way back down to my buy zone level, right? Which a lot of people would have did. Or I could have trailed my stock. Right, put my stop right here, but right here, right at entry at break even. Price came all the way down, came all the way back up, retested it, try to retest the break even point because it already knew a lot of people put they put they uh stop there. So what it did was just stop a lot of people out. So you could have kept your stop where you was gonna keep it at anyway, right? Because of the simple fact you already was willing to risk this thirty dollars to make whatever. Right. If you got a risk to reward ratio set up, like I said, the proper risk to reward and people like like a lot of people think like, oh, risk management. They think like, oh, my God, I got to do this and do that. And it's not nothing but just get your strategy down pat and not just only getting your strategy down pat, understanding what my losses are, when to cut my losses and what my profits are going to be. Right. So if I got a nice risk to reward ratio, um, I can lose so many times. And once I win, my my, my uh, reward is always bigger than my loss. All right. So at that point, I could have just literally not moved my stop. I already know I'm about to risk my $30, but I'm trying to make, you know what I'm saying? A five, a, a one to five risk to reward ratio. So I'm trying to make, you feel me, a hundred and some dollars, right? I'm trying to, you know, I'm risking this 30 some dollars, but I'm trying to make a hundred plus, right? Uh, and so therefore we could have kept our, we could have stayed in this trade, guys. It never, it never, it didn't, it's not like it reversed and went all the way to the 200. That would have had me scared because guess what? It would have broke structure. It would have already went and made a newer, higher high than where you already got in at. So therefore you should already be blowing that, that trade is out of the, out of the, out of the question now at this point, because if it came and created a whole new higher high above the last higher high where your entry was at, come on, man, that's not, that's not. Why would you think price going to come back down for what? And even if it is going to come back down, why would you want to lose that much money? You want to try to be getting the most money as possible. So you, if, and if it is going to pull all the way back up there to the 200, you want to be getting in your entry for yourself around the 200 area. You don't want price to cut to come all the way back down to your entry. You're crazy, bro. You're crazy. Cause then that it could be a, re a total reversal. It can just pull back, find support and continue to the upside. <laughs> so I'm telling you this all off experience, guys. It's not me making up anything, giving you something that's on YouTube. None of that, man. Even though I learn stuff off YouTube, I learn every day. I'm supposed to. I'm a mentor. I should never say, oh, I got the answer and this is that. No, I'm learning every single day. And as you guys see, price is still pushing up on Bitcoin, man. Now we at 35, 150. Now. 
So price is still pushing up right at our buy area. And then what did price do from our sale area from that double top? It came all the way back down to our buy area, guys, um, under the 14 and continued to go to the downside. Once it got back to that to that buy area, what is it doing? It's creating a, it's created an engulfing and price is pushing up, man. Uh, so pretty much, man, this is how I'm finding strategies. This is how I'm finding uh, my entries. This is how I'm finding my entry points, everything uh, as far as, you know what I'm saying? Already developing my bias, already did my analytics, already put my lines up. And I'm sorry about if I didn't show any patterns in, in this um, little tutorial right now is because that's going to be for a different story. I just want you guys to realize, understand structure, 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 structure. I want you to understand um, that you're only placing buys off support and you're only placing sales off resistance. Anything else. And if and if you just literally just like blindsiding yourself and just like, oh, I can see where support is because my eyes, just, you got the best eye fucks in the world. You're crazy. Um, if I was you, I will always start from my historical data, look at where price is, and then bring my uh, bring my zones over from that point on out. Now, I don't have to have them long all on my screen looking dumb. Um, and, and once price moves from the area, I can delete them as well. But um, I'm definitely going to understand and, 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 and make sure I put structure first, because um, like right now, if I had a line, if I had my, my trend in line right at all my touches that I see in a, in a downtrend, right? So I got a, a, a trend line over the top and then I got a trend line over the bottom, right? If price touched those areas, if price was to touch those areas, guess what? I have a better win rate and, and, and then I see a certain story. Like I see the candles telling me a certain story and I see it touching certain areas. I see it touching my zones. I see it touching my trend lines. I see it touching certain things. I see it touching my AMAs. I bet a million dollars I have a better risk to reward and a better proper risk management than you will ever have entering those trades off of zones and trend lines and support and resistance than you will ever have just entering anywhere. Just thinking that, hey, you know, oh, this looks good. I'm going to get in right here. I bet I have a better uh, win rate than you got, than you will have, right, if you was to do that, right? But if you was to sit here and literally go do your analytics, um, set your charts up, right? And then set up proper, uh, proper uh, support and resistance zones, and you base your trades off those zones, even if they're smaller to the bigger, go all the way from small to big zones. Once price gets to those areas, you'll have a better win rate than anybody else in the market, man. Because guess what? You're listening. You're understanding that it, it takes a support to buy and it takes a resistance to sell. You're understanding that now at this point. So no matter how many fucking indicators you use, you can put a million indicators on here. You can put 30,000 indicators on there. They all should be determining something. Ichimoku cloud. If you slap an Ichimoku cloud on there, guess what? If price is above the cloud, you're looking for buys. If price below the cloud, you're looking for sales. It's the same difference, right? Right? It's support and resistance. God, they just give you technically to where hey, you know, they're doing it for you, therefore, you don't have to do it. Guys, like, just come on, man. Start using your mindset and start using your brand before y'all losing your money, man. For y'all using your money, man. You know what I'm saying? That's how it's gonna all lay out and play out in fact. You know what I'm saying? Vice versa, right? So um, I'll have a better win rate just by basing my trades off support and resistance and, 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 and my trend lines and things of that nature. And then certain patterns that price is making, I'm going to have a better rip, a win rate, guys. So therefore, and I'm going to have more confidence when I'm entering into my trade. I'm not just entering into my trade and I'm scared. Like, oh, did I, should I got in right here? Or I'm not just basing my trade off one thing. I see a higher high and a higher low. So I'm going to get in. No, I'm literally waiting for different types of setups, man. I'm going on different charts and I'm waiting on setups that make sense to me before I'm putting in my money, dude. I don't care if a dude, I don't care if Sean Lee, Swaggy C, uh, Jackpot told me himself, go ahead, enter right now. I'm doing my own analysis first, right? So that's what I want you guys to make that a habit. I want you guys to like, let's practice doing that. Like, let's let, like, you know what I'm saying? Let's normalize that, right? Let's normalize getting on social media and hitting these charts. And, and, and back testing and trying to see, hey, you know, you know, how, how would you think if you was in this situation? And why, you know, what works, man? Like, let's start, let's start, let's start using everything that we learn and, 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 and applying it on the charts, man, to where it makes sense. And then, boom, I bet you a million dollars, your trade going to change. Your trade going to go up. And you would be a lot successful. You would be a lot more confident entering your trades. And you're not going against the trend, no matter how good it looks, unless... You know what I'm saying? 
you had a proper knowledge to be able to do so, right? So as you see right now in front of me, this buy is going crazy right now on Bitcoin, right? Not crazy, crazy, but yeah, I bet you, let me see how many pips. Two, 300 pips right now on Bitcoin you could have got. So I'm gonna just let y'all know, man. I'm gonna sit that there and I'm gonna show you guys, look, off this trend line, off this support line, all added up, it all met up at the same time, man. Price is not doing nothing but the same thing. Check historical data and learn how to get into these bands, man. You already know what time it is. SMS FX. Uh, I'm about to drop some more, some more knowledge on OnlyFans for the free ball, man. SMS FX, man. OnlyFans, dude, for the free ball, man. Make sure you tell a friend to tell a friend, man. You know what I'm saying? That y'all got options, man. Y'all ain't got to go to no LMAOs. Y'all ain't got to go here and pay a million dollars, man. Y'all can get free game. And then, if, and then if you want to go into further detail and you want me to mentor you guys to get you guys to be able to get to the next level i mean like i mean like long as you're serious though right long as you're serious and you're really trying to get to the next level i'm gonna help you get to the next level i promise that um that's gonna be my promise to you guys um i won't give up on you guys if you don't give up on yourself but if you really want to get to the next level and you got a couple dollars you got a couple you know what i'm saying some bands to play with as you see right now at my buy zone at my uh my trend line bitcoin has hit 35 268 man come on man Oh, well, oh, five, uh, 35, 300. I'm sorry, 35,300 right now off the buy zone, bro. How many pips is that? All right, let me see how many pips that is. Oh, and it's still shooting up, it's going crazy right now. It done shot to 35, 400. Let's go. I'm showing you this live 500, 500 pips, man. 536 some pips, man. Right at a buy zone. Let's get it. Now, I wouldn't take it no more to this 14 EMA, just me personally, because like I said, this is a downtrend, guys. Um, and I wouldn't get I wouldn't want to give you guys any mixed signals. That's just me. I would have got in and out. I, and, and if it and if it was another setup and it was just let's just say a Maribozo candle came, start coming next, and it was moving like a train, I would have got into it still. And I would have still scapped it and got in and out. God, I would have took it up to this next high. All right. That's just me personally. And uh, like I said, the market is not your friend, the trend is not your friend. Don't listen to none of that, man. Do the work, do the work, set up the zone, set up every pattern you see and base your trades off those, man. Off support and resistance, man. All right, let's get it, gang. Y'all know what time it is, man. I'm gonna turn up only if you want me to. Let's get it. 